The next type of adaptive immunity is actually the humoral immunity, which is the B cells making antibodies as well as also differentiating into, uh, into memory B cells. So B cells have these receptors, IgM receptors, right, that recognize one specific epitope, so maybe uh, an antigen on some kind of virus. When the receptor binds the antigen, it kind of internalizes it and loads it into the MHC2 system. And the B cell is activated, in this case, by, again, helper T cells. So helper T cells are actually part of the um, adaptive immune system in both the humoral sense as well as the cell-mediated sense. So it's found in both systems. It's going to activate, um, uh, it's going to be activated by the T cell and eventually it can actually uh, end up differentiating into a plasma cell which ends up secreting antibodies and it can also drive, those T helper cells can also drive B cells to become memory B cells which is involved in immunolo uh, immunological memory. So in this case it's a direct effector so it's going to end up uh, making soldiers that's going to go and target those, those uh, viruses in your body by shooting out antibodies and it can also make uh, some secondary memory B cells that kind of stay in the back lines and if there is some kind of an infection that comes in later, maybe a year later with that same virus, your body is going to recognize it because of these memory B cells and it's going to go target it very, very quickly. So that's the overview of the humoral immunity, uh, the humoral immune system, excuse me. Let's go through it in a little bit more detail. So once again, we have the activation phase where you have some kind of a macrophage or some kind of an antigen presenting cell, uh, such as a macrophage, a dendritic cell. And that macrophage, for instance, is going to go around your body and it let's say it runs into some kind of a virus and it eats it up. So there's an antigen on here. The macrophage is going to eat up that antigen or that virus and it's going to shred it. It's also going to take some of that shredded uh, virus and present it on the MHC2 system, so class 2 MHC protein. So it's going to shred that up and push, some, uh, push them up into the MHC2 display system. And then, and then you have a helper T cell. So a helper T cell comes in, recognizes this and binds to it, and then it's able to have some kind of a signaling mechanism. So the uh, macrophage is going to be in, uh, releasing different types of chemicals like uh, interleukin over here that's going to activate the helper T cell. So now the helper T cell is going to be activated and the helper T cell is going to be releasing cytokines that will actually stimulate it to proliferate. So your helper T cell is going to make more of itself. It's going to clone itself and then divide and make more of itself and more of itself. And it's just going to make a bunch of uh, helper T cells and it's going to flow around in your body. And now these helper T cells are all activated. So now we can go to the effector phase. Now that activated helper T cell can float around and bind to something else, and in this case, a B cell. So B cells in your body will also bind certain types of antigens. Let's say it's that same antigen. It's binding to that same antigen. It's going to internalize that antigen, so maybe it's some kind of a virus. It's going to internalize the virus. It's going to shred the virus just like what the macrophage did, and it's going to present it into an MHC2 uh, system over here, as shown in yellow. And the activated T cell, activated T helper cell, excuse me, is going to bind to it. And then that's where the magic happens. That's when the T helper cell is going to be releasing uh, cytokines to activate the B cell to proliferate. So B cell uh, eats up some of that virus. It's going to shred it, present it on the MHC2 system. T helper cell that was activated before is going to bind to it and it's going to release the cytokines to activate the B cell to proliferate. Okay, so your B cell is going to be proliferating. Great, so we're over here. This is a different diagram, but uh, same idea. So this over here is the same as this over here. So we have the binding to the MHC2 antigen complex over here, and the helper T cell is once again uh, releasing the cytokines, and the B cell is going to be then uh, picking up the cytokines, and the cytokines are going to activate that B cell. Uh, and once that 
V cell is going to be activated, it's going to proliferate and differentiate into um, basically two different types of cells. We have memory B cells, which again, have the immunological memory of whatever uh, antigen is, is going to be specific for. So it has those antibodies that are specific for that particular antigen, as well as plasma cells. The plasma cells, AKA effector cells, are what's going to actually go out and start shooting out those, uh, those antibodies to tag different uh, antigens in the bot around your body so if there's a virus floating around these plasma cells are going to shoot out some of these uh, these antibodies the antibodies are going to end up binding to the antigens like so shown here and it's uh, the tagging sometimes the tagging of an antibody to some kind of an antigen is enough to stop it already but oftentimes it signals for macrophages and other big old cells like dendritic cells to come in and eat up that virus or whatever pathogen is uh, in the body. So what we're really looking for over here in this particular slide is immunological memory. So memory B cells and T cells are made during the first immune response uh, and they live for a long time and cause a stronger and faster response if the same pathogen infects again. And so we're looking over here in this case with memory B cells. So if your body gets infected with the same virus sometime down the line, maybe a few years later, your body is going to memorize it and recognize it and it's going to use those memory B cells to go uh, and, and make a faster response. So one of the key things about the whole concept of immunity is that it takes time, especially if we're talking about the uh, adaptive immune system. The innate immune system reacts relatively quickly, but the adaptive immune system really does take a little bit of time because it has to go through all these little processes of activation and, uh, and, and creating some kind of an, an effector phase. So this is the reason why it will take you about a week or more to uh, feel better if you get a cold or a flu because it will actually sometimes take humoral immunity or cell mediated immunity uh, about a week before it actually can can go into full swing and actually fight off whatever pathogen is in your body so that's that's part of the reason why it's it's going to take a little bit more more time it's more specific and it's it's more specific definitely than the innate immune system but it will sacrifice that specificity with time.